Okay, let's take a look at the chain rule using some trig functions. Now again, here are the derivatives of the trig functions, but we want to look at some problems involving composite functions using uh, trig. So let's take a look at some basic examples. Now on this first one, this is just a basic derivative. This would not be considered a composite function. Uh, you can use the basic derivatives for this. So the derivative of the sine of x would be y prime, and the derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x, and you're done. So as long as you have a simple positive x, you do not have to use the chain rule. Look at this next example. What you've got here is 3x inside of the sine function. So the outer function is the sine of x, the inner function is 3x. So you're going to use the same rule. Now what the rule says when you find the derivative using the chain rule, it's the derivative of the outer part, rewrite the inner part, times the derivative of the inner part. So the derivative of the sine is the cosine. Then I'm going to rewrite the original inner function, which is 3x. I'll put it in red, so 3x. Then times the derivative of what's on the inside. So now I just find the derivative of what's on the inside, which is 3. Now, usually, you'll go ahead and move the 3 out in front and make it be 3 times the cosine of 3x, and you will be done. So there it is. Now, some students <coughs> try to do this. They try to multiply the 3 times the 3 and make it 9x. So this is wrong, but I'll put it up here where you can see it. It is not, y prime is not equal to the cosine of don't multiply the 3 times the 3 and get 9x. That, that is incorrect. So take the 3 and move it all the way out in front. Let's try this one. Again, this is not just a simple positive x, so we'll have to use the chain rule again. So y prime is equal to, first of all, take the derivative of the outer part. The derivative of the sine is the cosine. Then rewrite the original inner part then times the derivative of what's on the inside, which is a negative 1. Then you can bring this negative in front, and you would wind up with this. y prime would be equal to the negative of the cosine of negative x, and you've got it. Now, some students get confused about whether they need to use the chain rule or not. Look at this function and this one. So let's go up this one and this one are exactly the same thing. Now, here we solved it without the chain rule. If you're never, never sure, go ahead and use the chain rule, and it'll work. Let's try it with the chain rule this time. So, the chain rule will always work. The derivative of the sine is the cosine. Rewrite the original inner part times the derivative of what's on the inside, but as long as it's a simple positive x, that derivative is just one, which gives you y prime is equal to the cosine of x, and this answer up here is exactly the same as this answer right here. So if you're not sure, go ahead and use the chain rule. Let's take a look at a couple more. Okay, the derivative of this one, and this is like one of each type here, so let's just kind of run through these. y prime would be equal to, derivative of the cosine is the negative of the sine. Then rewrite the original inner part then times the derivative of what's on the inside, which would be 6x, and you are done. Let's try a tangent one. y prime, the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. So this will be the secant squared of this. There's the derivative of the outer part. Rewrite the original inner part times the derivative of what's on the inside, which would be 15x squared, and you are done. Now, if you want to, you can move the 15x squared out in front. We'll do it in this one problem. But you, when you look in the back of the book, the answer might be 15x squared times the secant squared of 5x cubed. So if you want to, you can always take this part right here and move it out in front. Let's try this one. y prime. The derivative of the cotangent is the negative of the cosecant squared. 
So the negative of the cosecant squared, that's the derivative of the outer part. Then rewrite the original inner part. Then take the derivative of what's on the inside, which is a 4. And again, if you want to, you can move the 4 out in front. Let's try a secant one. <clears throat> um, the derivative of the secant is the secant tangent. Now, the way I like to write these is this. I'm going to write it as the secant of this times the tangent of this. Now, it's a little bit confusing on this one because the x shows up twice. So what you do is put the original function here and the original function here. Now, the rule says that it's the derivative of the outer part times the derivative of the inner part, but you just have to do the inner part once. So the derivative of that would be 8x, and you would be done. Now again, if you want to, you can move the 8x out in front of the entire thing. Let's try this one. y prime is equal to the derivative of the cosecant is the negative of the cosecant, and I like to put parentheses here, times the cotangent, and put parentheses here. Now, go ahead and rewrite the original inner part twice. You have to write it here, and you have to write it here. Then it's times the derivative of what's on the inside. The derivative of 6x minus 2 is 6, and you are done. So there's a sample of one of each kind. Let's look at a couple more. Okay, now watch this one. This is we're going to sometimes square the trig function, sometimes or cube it, sometimes you cube the argument. Watch each one of these. On this one, the derivative would be the derivative of the sine is the cosine. Then rewrite the original inner part, then times the derivative of what's on the inside, 8x, and you are done. Now for this next one, this is incredibly important, so watch this. Anytime you've got a trig function, and the trig function itself is cubed, the problem will make a whole lot more sense if you do this. I'm going to rewrite this as the sine of 4x squared, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this cube right here, and I'm going to move it to the outside of the entire thing and make it be the entire trig function cubed. If you write it like that, it'll make it easy to see what's going on. So watch how we apply this. So now, what I've got, the initial thing I've got here is something cubed. So the derivative would be 3 times that thing squared. Now, rewrite the inner part. Now, the inner part is the sine. So rewrite the original inner part, the sine of 4x squared. Now, you're going to multiply that times the derivative of what's on the inside. Now treat this inside, this red part here, as a brand new problem. The derivative of the sine is the cosine of 4x squared. Then times the derivative of what's on the inside, which would be 8x. So what you've actually got there is the chain rule twice, the chain rule inside the chain rule. So you had to use the chain rule, but then when you did this red part, that's also the chain rule. So the derivative of the outer part times the derivative of the inner part. So this second part down here looks exactly like this part right up here. So when you found this derivative here, it's just like the second part of this one down here. Now what this was, this was the trig function was cubed. Let's try if the argument's cubed. We'll do it a couple of different ways. So what this one's going to be is this, y prime would be, and if it helps you, you can kind of think of it like this. Think of this as having brackets around it right here. So the derivative of the sine is the cosine. Now, rewrite the original inner part. So I'll do that in red. So it is 4x squared cubed. Now times the derivative of what's on the inside. So take the derivative of this thing, but that's also the chain rule. So it's going to be 3 times something squared. Rewrite the original inner part. I think I'll do it in red again. Times the derivative of what's on the inside. So the derivative of this would be 8x, 
and you were done. So again, you had to use the chain rule twice on that one. Uh, let's take a look at this one. It's got both um, the trig function cubed and this one cubed. Um, so what this one would be, I'm going to rewrite it as uh, the sine of 4x squared cubed, the whole thing to the fourth power. So the derivative would be y prime. It's going to be 4 times something cubed. Rewrite the inner part. times the derivative, now just take the derivative of what's on the inside. The derivative of the sine is the cosine of 4x squared cubed. So the derivative of the sine is the cosine, but now you have to take times the derivative of what's on the, ins of, on the inside. So think of this as being in brackets again with parentheses around this. Uh, so I've taken the derivative of the sine as the cosine times the derivative of the inner part. But again, the inner part is going to be this part right here. That's also going to be, so I'm just looking, I think I'll do it in red here where it stands out, just the derivative of this thing right here. So the derivative of that will be 3 times 4x squared, the entire thing squared, times the derivative of what's on the inside. So the derivative of this, and finally, <clears throat> I come up with 8x, and that's going to be it. So let's take a look at this one more time. First of all, it's 4 times the derivative of the outer part. Now look at the sine. The derivative of the sine is the cosine, and rewrite the inner part. Then the derivative of the inner part, treat this as a brand new problem, 3x or 3 squared. Then treat this center part as a brand new problem. When you finally get done, that's it. So it's a combination. That's the chain rule about 3D. And I think we'll do this. We'll save this last problem for later on. So we'll, it's going to be a, just a different way of working the same thing. So we'll leave this one out for right now. And we'll look at some additional examples in the next chapter.